the other side of the coin, uh, Central Connecticut, they actually have four of their six top returning players. So Connecticut also has that as ball tips off here. And Amaya Battle starts with the ball in the field. The Gophers are going to look to play what Coach P calls positionless basketball this year, where any one of their five players on the court can really take on any offensive position at any given time, making it very difficult to defend. Mara Braun with the mid-range doesn't go. Rebound number three, Selena Monestein, and Central Connecticut is on the other side. This Gopher coaching staff thinks that this year's team is going to be able to generate a ton of energy through their defensive pressure and turning the basketball over. Absolutely. And you see that pressure right here. Central Connecticut with the three, no good. And Sophie Hart with the rebound. Selena Monestein, quick shot, doesn't go. And Central Connecticut struggled with the three-pointer in the past. We'll see if they're able to turn around here as jump ball is called. Amaya Williams just able to get her hands in there. And the possession arrow is Central Connecticut's way. Central Connecticut ball. I think we're seeing a little bit of first game of the season jitters here from both teams so far. I think one thing to note, uh, University of Minnesota has had 30 practices. That's as much as NCAA allows it. And Minnesota has made the most of it. And Central Connecticut drives inside. Rebound, no go. And Mara Braun, excuse me, Amaya Battle gets the rebound. And off the other way, mid-range, a little short, gets her own board, though. Back out, Braun for the three. Little short, and we are the other way with Amaya Williams for Central Connecticut. Shots haven't been able to fall so far for Minnesota. Is that those early season jitters? I think it is. You can see all of the girls' follow-throughs are a little bit short. There's some tension in the muscles. I think once we get to this first time out here, we'll see them take a nice deep breath and come out a different squad. Absolutely, as Amaya Battle gets the steal. Other end, Mara Braun stops the defense for a second, takes a breather, trying to pick her spot, gets the mid-range. In and out, Graholski with the rebound, and it goes. Minnesota's first points of the season are thanks to an offensive rebound from Grace Graholski. You know, and Grace can do a little bit of everything. She's known for her three-point shooting, but she also was a double-digit scorer last year with 10.8 points per game, a great free-throw shooter, and she was a unanimous Big Ten all-freshman last year. She was an offensive threat who was not only a scorer, but a rebounder, too, as Central Connecticut makes the mistake. Minnesota ball. Megan Kenefinick will probably want that pass back, huh? I think so, and again, looking for everyone to settle in a little bit. You see the Gophers walking the ball up the court, taking their time getting into their offense. Mar Braun up top. Out to Stewart, drains it. And that is the first basket for Annika Stewart, graduate student from Nebraska, four years out there, comes back home from Plymouth, Minnesota, and gets her first basket as a Gopher. What a great addition to this Gopher squad, a, a hometown Wyzetta girl returning to play for her last year of eligibility, hitting that three within her first offensive play of the game. Grace Graholski with the steal out to Mara Braun in the corner. This Minnesota team, a lot of movement with the three just short. <laughs> when you hit one three, you go for another. Didn't quite land that time. As on the other end, Cent Central Connecticut just can't get their hands on the ball right, and Minnesota's off to a quick 5-0 start. They are, and I think, you know, Central Connecticut, the Blue Devils, are just having a hard time getting into their offensive rhythm and flow. Absolutely. As Amaya Battle brings the ball up here. Out to Mara Braun. We're going to be saying her name a lot today. As she goes for the three and sinks it. Mara Braun, first basket of the season, and that is a shot that we have seen time and time again here at Williams Arena. Mara Braun averaged 17 points per game last year as a sophomore. You could see her take kind of that sigh of relief when she hit that last three-pointer. Again, Mara Braun named to the 20-player watch list for the Ann Myers Dysgale Shooting Guard Award for Player of the Year. So she is a threat that we are going to see throughout this season. And that's quite the honor. There are some big names on that list with her. Juju Watkins from USC, AZ Fudd from UConn. So she is in good company being named to that 20-person list early in the season. Yeah, Selena Monestein couldn't get that shot to go, but Mallory Heyer is able to get hers to go. Time out, Central Connecticut. 10-0 run by Minnesota. And 
Central Connecticut just can't get the ball in the net. If you're the head coach, and actually, we are going to send it here for a full media timeout. Minnesota 10, Central Connecticut 0. Central Connecticut is going to be looking to put some points on the board when we come back. Best, which is just getting to the boards. Nice, aggressive move to the basket by her. Yeah, Mallory Heyer has just been able to, everyone's really been able to score. Mara Braun with three, Stewart with three, Graholski with two. All of these players have been able to get their hands in the basket, if you will, and getting a couple points on the board. Always good to start off the season in that manner. I think that's going to be one of the strong points for this Gopher squad this year is their ability for anyone on the court to be able to score. They have a really balanced scoring attack, and they complement each other really well with their, their strong basketball skills. Absolutely. One thing to note is that Minnesota, though started off slow, has hit the last four out of their five shots, which is what's called forced uh, Central Connecticut to call a timeout. They need to reset here. They do, and you can see Minnesota brought some substitutes in off the bench. Alexia Rose, number zero. Tori McKinney, number 14, from Minnetonka. Some fresh faces. We kind of talked to coaches about this, and they said, don't be surprised if you see these newer players get some time at the beginning. We want them to get rid of the rust, feel comfortable here at Williams Arena, and kind of enjoy their time, their first time being a gopher. Getting them comfortable playing in Williams Arena as a gopher, and I also think Coach Plitzewhite is probably looking to see what matchups work best for her in some of these early games going into the season before Big Ten play begins. Yeah, Alexia Rose bringing the ball up. A UMass transfer, uh, though also spent three seasons at East Carolina playing starting 22 of their 81 games as Mara Braun can't get that shot to go. Mara Braun has three points on the board, but she's also one for five. Central Connecticut looking to get their first points of this game today. Inside the lane, that's Alana Sellers, and that is the first points of the season for Central Connecticut. With so many players out and a lot of transfers, they're going to be calling on Alana Sellers and Kennefinick to get points on the board. They are. You can see the Blue Devils here have switched to a 1-2-2 zone defense. I think they're looking to stop some of that dribble penetration from the Gophers in the half court. Well, I mean, as we've seen, the shooting, though has given Minnesota lead, hasn't been perfect so far. And they're telling Minnesota, hey, take your shot. We'll see what happens here. Mara Braun's able to slice right through that defense and get two more points on the board. Minnesota 12, Central Connecticut 2. Mara Braun showing a little bit of her versatility. She's known for her outside threat and her outside shooting, but she's also capable of taking the ball to the basket when needed. Amaya Williams just a little too strong. Good spin move to evade from Alexia Rose, but just couldn't get the finish. On the other end, Stewart almost gets that to go, but gets the foul. Great up-tempo play there by the Gophers. You can see Alexia Rose looking for her teammate Stewart, catching the Blue Devils off guard and ending up with that defensive foul for the Blue Devils. Yeah, just a little too much contact there. Central, Central Connecticut, you want to be tough, but you don't want to smack their arm while you're doing it. And that is going to send Stewart to the line. Already gotten her first points as a gopher. We'll see if she can add some more at the free throw line. First one down for Stewart. We've also seen a new player come in, and that is Taylor Woodson, a freshman from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Excuse me, a sophomore, transferred from Michigan. So she has that Big Ten experience has just decided to return home. What does that mean to be back in Minnesota after going out for a season or two? I think it speaks to the program that Coach Plitzewhite is building here. You're seeing some of these hometown Minnesota girls returning either for their graduate season or coming back and transferring within their four years. Taylor Woodson was a standout player at Hopkins High School, won state championships there. So she has played on this Williams Arena court before. Annika Stewart with the roll, doesn't get it to go. Good save on the other end to keep the ball in Minnesota's hands, but they just can't get the finish. And Central Connecticut is going to be looking to try to add to their two points that they have so far here in this first quarter. Keep an eye on true freshman Tori McKinney, number 14. She is a defensive menace out on the court. The coaches love her length and her versatility on the defensive end. Woodson for her first points as a gopher, doesn't get it to go quite yet. And Central Connecticut gets the rebound. Lucy Noyne, Lucia Noyne, excuse me, gets the board. And Central Connecticut is back up top. 
seems like the Blue Devils are having a challenging time getting into their offensive rhythm and getting into their offensive sets. Out into the corner to Kenneth Finnick, and a turnover again from this Central Connecticut team. That has just been error after error, and Stewart with the three, it's good! Annika Stewart has been lighting it up here today at first game as a gopher and another three-pointer for this Minnesota team. What a great addition to the Gopher squad. Fifth-year player, got a ton of playing time, a successful experience out in Nebraska, and coming home to help them out here in her fifth year. Annika Stewart already has seven points and a rebound, which is getting close to her average at her entire time in Nebraska. As Kenneth Bennett gets her first points on the board, finally, Central Connecticut gets a shot to fall, and they cut the lead to 12 here. Kenneth Bennett, is a threat for the Central Connecticut team, but they just haven't been able to get her the ball so far. Stewart double teamed, able to get the ball up top. Alexia Rose out to McKinney. Three-pointer, not quite. And foul on Woodson, a little too aggressive on that rebound attempt. And that is her first foul of the night. I do love that Taylor Woodson went in for that rebound. Oftentimes when a team is playing a zone defense against you, it can be really challenging from the offensive side to get those rebounds. So I hope that doesn't deter her from continuing to attack the offensive boards. Absolutely. Another thing to talk about so, so far in this game is that turnover, which has just been killing Central Connecticut so far. Eight turnovers already, and we are not even done with the first quarter. And I think some of that is the Gophers pressure and the Gopher, Gophers player to player defense, but then also some of that I think is some first first game jitters for the Blue Devils. Dagne Slomak with the three, excuse me, Lucia Noin with the three, and that has been the first three pointer of Central Connecticut so far tonight. Cuts the lead down to nine, and Minnesota back at Amaya Battle's hands. And she drives it to the lane, and it's good. Amaya Battle puts the lead back up in double digits, and Minnesota is going to be looking to keep control as we hit the last minute of this first quarter. Amaya Battle, a junior this year, has such a calming presence as the point guard on this Gopher squad. Absolutely. Up top, Lucy Noin couldn't get it to go. Ooh. You see that little bit of slip up there. Mara Braun didn't have to worry about it, though. Battle is there to clean it up. As Mara Braun with the mid-range, not quite. Foul going the other way. Graholski just over the back. Obviously, get that rebound. Don't don't get don't foul other people though. Again, I like the aggressiveness. <laughs> yes. Out of that zone defense, I think they've got to continue to attack the offensive boards, especially because they do have a little bit more height than the Blue Devils, especially down low with Sophie Hart, Monica absolutely. Stewart. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's just finding that balance of aggression and not committing fouls, because the last thing you need is a player to rack up and get in foul trouble here. In the middle of the lane, doesn't go for Jessica Farrell, and Minnesota has the rebound here. Going up the court on the right side. Mara Braun steps into the middle, uses her strength, and one. Mara Braun shows the Central Connecticut defense. You do the shot, I can do better. Gets the contact here in the replay, takes the contact, drives into the lane, and gets the foul. She makes it look easy, but I can tell you that is not an easy possession. Driving to your left, finishing with all of that contact with your right hand. Yeah, I definitely couldn't do that if I tried. Offensive rebound, and it's good. Sophie Hart gets the offensive rebound. Didn't have the most rebounds last season, but still always a rebounding threat as the defense for Minnesota. Mara Braun into the lane. Foul. Wow. Great pressure by Minnesota. Gets, turns defense into offense, and Mara Braun is back at the free throw line in a matter of seconds. I think everyone is surprised that Mara Braun missed that free throw, given that she's a 92% free throw shooter. So she'll get another chance here with his next free throws. Uh, just a chance to remedy the mistake. Yes, I missed my first, but watch me make my second. Unless it's announcer's curse. Don't want to jinx it. If you're this Minnesota team, going into the last few seconds of the first quarter. How are you feeling about yourself? I think they're feeling pretty good. They've got one turnover, nine rebounds as a team. I think, you know, you're starting to see them settle in a little bit. 
play the style of basketball that they want to play. You can see them picking up with a full court defense here with 11.3 seconds remaining in the quarter. Yeah, just absolutely stifling defense for this Central Connecticut team. If you're Central Connecticut going into the end of this first quarter, what do you say? How do you pick this game back up and try to really put, your, put yourself in a position to keep this game competitive? You know, I think it starts with defense. Right? It seemed like they were trying to determine whether they were going to be in a player to player or a zone. Find what defense is working and stick with it. Last shot there by Dagny Slomak. Couldn't get it to go. Minnesota 24, Central Connecticut 7. And we are one quarter of experience under her belt. She is 15 years at Temple, three NCAA appearances. She has a lot of experience at the big level. She's brought it to the Central Connecticut State team, who is ranked second in the Northeastern Conference to finish, according to the preseason poll, as Sophie Hart gets that shot to go. What do you think about that? This Central Connecticut team, who was 9-21 and 21 last season, 7-9 and nine in conference play, projected to finish second. You know, this is her second year with Central Connecticut. I think it takes a few years to build the culture and the right players in the right seats for Coach Vini. So, you know, look for them to improve upon their 9-21 and 21 record from last year. Again, they're, they're projected to be second in the conference this year, which is already an improvement. Getting better each game, I think, is going to be, be the key for the Blue Devils. Yeah, my battle with the rebound. Absolutely. Minnesota is no stranger to a second-year coach. Just couldn't get that shot to go. Foul going the other way. Minnesota, that aggression has done so well for them, and sometimes it ends them in a little bit of a foul issue. Give the Blue Devils credit. They are a shorter team in stature than the Gophers, and they are doing a terrific job of finding a body and boxing out out of that zone. And you can see the Gophers going over the back repeated times trying to get those offensive rebounds. Yes, absolutely. That ability to box out has done well for Central Connecticut, who is, again, a team with a second-year head coach. Minnesota and all the fans here tonight know we also have a second-team head coach, Don Plutzuit. So both of these teams can kind of relate to that, building that culture, getting that experience, and starting to build a team from the bottom up to hopefully contest in their conference and an NCAA tournament. Doesn't get that shot to go. Rebound by Megan Kenefinick, and Central Connecticut now has eight on the board. Good rebound play by Central Connecticut. We know that Megan Kenefinick is a versatile player. She's known for her three-point shot, but she's also able to get the offensive rebounds, as you saw there. Yeah, great job. Kenefick is one of the bigger players on this team, so the expectation is a little bit for her to get those boards as Braun drives into the lane, gets the go with the one-hand finish. That is a tough finish to make any day of the week. Such a soft finish for Mara Braun. Just a talented scorer for the Gophers. Quick shot there by Central Connecticut. Couldn't get it to go. Alana Sellers, not the biggest three-point shooter, but if she gets the chance, she's going to take it. Quick steal there by Sellers, and a little sloppy play, but ball bounces around a bit. Central Connecticut gets to keep it. Tough pass from the top of Amaya Battle to Sophie Hart. Sophie Hart was already double teamed. Amaya didn't see the double team. Looking to get the ball into her post there resulted in a turnover. Yeah, absolutely. Fun fact about Central Connecticut, they're actually the oldest public school in the state of Connecticut. So a little bit of history being played against here with Minnesota being the oldest and Central Connecticut being the oldest in their respective states. As number 22, Alana Sellers is able to get it to go. That is four quick points for her. Battle on the other end here. Gets the screen from Hart into the mid-range, drives in. Tough finish, couldn't get it to go. And Central Connecticut gets the rebound and looking to add some points on the other end. Nice little high ball screen and roll between Amaya Battle and Sophie Hart. Tough contact there. Jessica Farrell was going into the lane. Two defenders on her. Look at the replay here. She saw the opportunity. She takes it and Battle just gets a little too much contact on it. And that sends Farrell to the free throw line. Great job getting back on defense by the Gophers, but looking to be straight up and down as opposed to going for the foul. Vini making some changes to her team. Basketball is a lot of game of tactics, making adjustments while a game is going on. Obviously, you see with Central Connecticut, they switched already from a man-to-man -to, -man to a zone. You can also tell that they're looking to get the ball off the boards defensively and get the fast break going. So in the second quarter, I'm seeing them push the ball up the court offensively a lot more than I did in the first quarter. 
0 for 2 from the free throw line. That's not something you want to see if you're a Central Connecticut fan. And quickly on the other end, Minnesota with the ball in a dangerous position. Higher into the end. And no foul call. And Central Connecticut gets the ball to go their way after a turnover by Minnesota. Higher had the chance to drive into the lane, just couldn't get that finish. I think there was just a lot of traffic in the lane. She got tripped up by one of the Blue Devils players. Yeah, unlucky. Ball slips out of her hands. And Central Connecticut is looking to develop what their offense has been so far, which has been strong in the second quarter. Not quite the shot that you want. Megan Kenefinick has not been able to get that shot to go. And Mara Braun on the other end here. Out to Stewart. Stewart with the three. It's good. Annika Stewart. I have said her name time and time again already. And she has showing these Minnesota fans, I am here and I can be a key player. Her ability to find the open spot on the court within that offense, resulting in some easy three-pointers for her. Fantastic to see. Stay Central Connecticut ball. Alana Sellers couldn't get that shot to go in some substitutions as we see some new faces make a return on the floor. Ty Taylor Woodson and number 14, Tori McKinney, get back on the floor. Some new faces, a freshman and a sophomore, looking to get some more experience here at the barn. In the corner, just a bad pass into two defenders, and Minnesota's on the other end. Out to Woodson, just couldn't get it to go, still hasn't gotten her first basket, and quick offense by Central Connecticut State, and Salina Monestein gets it to go. Central Connecticut 12, Minnesota 31. That was that quick offense that you were talking about. You can tell they're making a concerted effort here in the second quarter to get the ball up the court a lot quicker than they did in the first quarter. And they've caught the Gophers sleeping a few times defensively. Mara Braun doesn't get the finish. Stewart gets the rebound. No good. Minnesota two chances and don't get anything on the board. Back on the other end, Central Connecticut moving to look quick here. Here's that fast-paced offense. And not quite what you want. Dagne Slomak just couldn't get the shot to go. And Minnesota quickly on the other end. Mara Braun in the corner. Quickly up top to Rose. In the post to Stewart. Oh, just a little too high. And we are going the other way. Good idea, just not the right execution. Third turnover of the quarter for Minnesota. So I think they're starting to settle into the game a little bit, but also I'm sure Coach, Coach Plitzwhite wants them to control the basketball offensively and limit the turnovers here in the second quarter. Absolutely, and something to mention here with this Central Connecticut team is they have yet to hit a three-pointer. Six attempts, none to go. We'll see if this offensive play that they got going here could get one in the hoop for them. They're not known as a three-point threat, but it is a part of the game of basketball, so look for them to continue to shoot. Kenefinick in the corner, can't get it to go. Offensive rebound and sloppy ball control, and Rose gets the steal, and Minnesota, their defense has been stifling this Central Connecticut three team on the other end. Kennedy with the three, no good. Rebound out to Rose, three-pointer. Just short, rebound by Woodson, and there you go. There are her first points as a Minnesota gopher. Wow. Great offensive rebound and putback by Taylor Woodson. Taylor Woodson, first points as a gopher. And time out here for Central Connecticut State. And we will be back shortly after this break. Here is the infamous blanket lady celebrating her 80th birthday here at Williams Arena. Pretty good shot. Anytime you go to a basketball game, you are going to see the blanket lady here. She's infamous at Williams Arena. Such a fantastic tradition that she's created here for the hometown fans. And here's Goldie the Gopher here with the Blanket Lady to celebrate the momentous occasion. You saw the players on the field when they were warming up. They had Blanket and 80 underneath. There you go for the Gopher fans. That's exactly why to celebrate Blanket Lady's 80th birthday. Happy birthday to you for all the spirit that you give here at Williams Arena. Minnesota, big lead up 19, excuse me, 21 already in the second quarter. What are you looking out of this Minnesota team as they continue to hopefully build and grow this lead? 
You know, I think I'd like to see Amaya Battle get involved offensively a little bit, even though she's their point guard. She is known to be a scoring threat as well. You can see them picking up here with this full court pressure. I think they're looking to get a little bit momentum and an energy shift here as well with that full court defense. Something to speak on with Battle is that she has five rebounds already. No assists, but that just shows you the kind of player that she is. She can not only be an offensive player, but get those rebounds for you when you need it the most. Even though she's their point guard, she does a little bit of everything for this gopher squad. Absolutely. Central Connecticut up top here. Shot up, no good. And Minnesota with the rebound. Amaya Williams just couldn't get that shot to fall. And then on the other end, Tori McKinney is up top. Out to Woodson. Gets it to go. Long mid-range by Woodson, and she adds to her point tally today. Minnesota 35, Central Connecticut 12. Taylor Woodson has always had that beautiful mid-range game, even as a high school player at Hopkins High School. So it's great to see her continue to build on that as a collegiate player. Got to say, a lot of Hopkins players from this Minnesota team. Hopkins so good at developing players to not only be good at the high school level, but also amazing at the collegiate level. Yeah, Taylor Woodson and Amaya Battle were high school teammates at Hopkins High School, so they've got that connection reunited as well. Megan Kennefinick was able to get that mid-ranger to go, and Central Connecticut adds to their tally to make it 14. She's having a nice second quarter for the Blue Devils. Three for five from the field with six points. McKinley just a little short on that mid-range, and Central Connecticut gets the ball the other way as they slow things down a bit, get their position, in the corner, it's good. Central Connecticut, Selena Monestein gets the shot to go. Not a three-pointer, but getting those long distance shots to fall is always a good thing to see. It is, it helps you get a little bit of confidence in your offensive game and the offensive flow. Amaya Battle had a couple chances there. Woodson on the other end, Amaya Battle, another rebound. Out to Graholski. Woodson for the three. Little short, McKinney with the rebound, and it's good. Time and time again, shot after shot. Minnesota couldn't get it to fall, but they had the rebounds, and they were finally able to put the ball in the basket. Great rebounding effort by the Gophers on that possession, starting with Amaya Battle, finishing up with Taylor Woodson, and then that beautiful offensive rebound put back by Tori McKinney. Yeah, that's that size that we were talking about. Minnesota has a bigger team, has a good steal there by McKinney, and Amaya Battle's on the other end looking to take this ball, turn defense into offense, drives coast to coast, ooh, doesn't get it to fall. And the foul is called, and we're gonna have some subs come in here. Minnesota, great defense so far, really putting Central Connecticut on their heels. You can look at the replay here, just a little too much contact there by Nehemiah Holloway, and Central Connecticut gets the foul call. Central Connecticut has 12 turnovers so far in the game, and that's typically about the number of turnovers you want for an entire game. 12 to 14 is right around that sweet spot, so I think that will definitely be a point of conversation for them in the locker room at halftime. Yeah, and as we get to the end of this first half, I do believe that is going to be one of the first talking points for Way Vini as she looks to get her team back into this game. Still a minute left, though. We'll see what they can do here with the ball in their hands. Three-pointer. It's good. Central Connecticut gets their first three-pointer to go. Lucia Noin gets that three-pointer to finally fall for Central Connecticut. Took oh so long, one for seven for the players on the floor right now. Foul call here deep in the post. That's on number 11, Kayla Henry. Just trying to post up against a bigger player like Sophie Hart, who's taller and got that bigger wingspan. It makes it tough. But again, like we've mentioned time and time again, got to find that balance. Sophie Hart does such a great job of getting the defensive player on her back, makes it very difficult to stop that dribble, that pass into her as a post player offensively. Quick shot, Mara Braun doesn't get it to go, and Central Connecticut gets the rebound. Great play just to start off from the inbound, turning it into a nice open mid-range, just couldn't get the shot to fall. Central Connecticut here in the corner. Looking to get some more offense going. Good deflection by Heyer, and we're going the other way. Great, Great. hustle play yes. by Mallory Heyer. We've seen her do that a time or two before. She is a hustle player for the Minnesota Gophers. Stewart comes in for Hart. Hart gets a little bit of a break here, and Stewart has been a great player so far here for Minnesota. 
racking up the points like it's nothing against this Central Connecticut team. I think she presents a difficult matchup for the Blue Devils because she is six foot three, so she's tall. And she's difficult to fend down low, but then she can also step out and shoot the three. And I don't know that the Blue Devils match up particularly well with her as a player, and she's taken advantage of that. Mallory Heyer, just a little too much movement on that screen, and we're going the other way. And Central Connecticut gets the ball here with 44 seconds left in this first half. See the defensive pressure picking up a little bit by the Gophers as this first half winds down. Great defense there by Tori McKinney as she drives coast to coast. Gets the finish to go. Tori McKinney might be a freshman, might be her first game, but that is a play you want to see if you're a Gopher fan here tonight. She's great at taking the ball coast to coast and being six foot one, she has incredible ball handling skills as you saw in that last possession. Central Connecticut taking looking to take this last shot here of the game of this half and we're going the other way great grit keeping the pressure on forcing Central Connecticut to make that mistake look at the replay here just a push in the back referee's going to call that and Minnesota looking at the teammates picking her up letting her know hey great grit there Alexia Rose taking the ball the length of the court last minute three and just fell short. Yeah, tough shot to pull it off right at the end, but Minnesota holding their heads up high. Up season this season. Absolutely. Change is constant in college sports, and by no surprise will this Big Ten be the Big Ten forever. As there we go with a quick shot to get things going for Central Connecticut, get the offensive rebound, and look at that aggression right off the bat. Central Connecticut get a shot off the board and the rebound to keep this offensive Set. You can Going. tell right away in this first possession that they are being aggressive towards the basket. And the shot goes for Amaya Williams. They had one three-pointer the entire first half. And less than 30 seconds on the clock, they tie that amount with a three-pointer here early in the third quarter. Great start for the Blue Devils. That first possession hitting a three. Early foul by Central Connecticut. Good pressure, but you could just see the hip checks. Just a little too much. Trips up Graholski and a quick foul by Central Connecticut as Mar as Amaya Battle is going to be looking to inbound this ball here. Golfers in a 1-4 low set here. Typically you're going to see some sort of screen happen amongst them. There we go, a little screen the screener action for Mara Braun. There's a screen that you saw. Mara Braun up top, unable to get the shot off. Gophers with a little bit of a mini reset. 12 seconds on the shot clock here. Into Hart. Ooh, unable to avoid the defense, but unable to get the shot to go. Tough one, going with the one-hand finish over the defender. Fantastic job by Sophie Hart. Getting that position down in the block, she just wasn't able to finish with the left hand. Yeah, not an easy finish. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it doesn't. That's just one of those chances where it didn't fall. Central Connecticut here with the ball on their hand. Got a three-pointer. Let's see what they're able to do with this possession. Mid-range jumper, no good. Foul called. And it's going to be Minnesota with the ball here. That's against number 12, Lucia Noin. Look on the replay here. Shot just a little long, and Noin just sticks her hand in where Hire's got the ball. A little too handsy, and Minnesota gets possession here. Battle up top. Minnesota being very deliberate with their offense so far in the second half, slowing the ball down, looking to run a set play on every possession. Ron with the three, no good. Graholski with the rebound, out to higher. Higher with another one. It's good. Minnesota with the three-pointer stretches their lead to 20, thanks to Mallory Higher. Great offensive set for the Gophers there. Good offensive rebounding, gets the second chance for a three-pointer, and it falls in the basket. Central Connecticut looking to respond with a basket of their own here. Sees the double team pressure, but turns it into a turnover. And Graholski bringing the ball up over to Braun in the corner battle. Three pointer. It's good. Minnesota doubling threes, two threes in a row. And Minnesota's pressure is, or offense, excuse me, is chugging along in a very smooth pace. Both of those offensive possessions started on the defensive end. Great defensive rotation by the Gophers on both of those defensive possessions. Yeah, one thing that we talked about going into the end of the first half was the turnovers for Central Connecticut, and that hasn't looked like to be slowing down anytime soon. 
up top here. Central Connecticut back to the basket. It's good. Good shot by Kenneth and Nick. An unbelievable finish. Just gets the space that she needs. A little bit of a hook shot. Gets it to fall. Grholski on the other end. Three-pointer. It's good. Dead on three-pointer. Responding quickly as Minnesota extends the lead to 24 here with seven minutes left in the third. She makes that look so easy. She was almost at the University of Minnesota logo on that one. Logo three-pointer is definitely not easy to pull off. On the other end here, Central Connecticut gets a shot to go. Alana Sellers. And Central Connecticut's offense has been moving at a good pace here going into the second half. They're running a high ball screen and roll. They're pulling Sophie Hart away from the basket, and Minnesota's having a tough time adjusting to that offensive set. Mara Braun with another three-pointer. Minnesota, the threes have been raining here in Williams Arena during this third quarter, and they're going to be looking to continue as we get through this game. There's that high ball screen and roll that I was talking about. Sophie Hart pulled way away from the basket. And in the corner, Dagne Slomak is able to get the three-pointer, and Central Connecticut one three-pointer in the second half, and they already have a couple here today. Both in teams this are kind of half. trading threes here at the start of this second half. Over to the other side, switching the court to higher. Movement up top, Hart with the screen. Graholski gave him the space to fire a three. Not quite, a little long, but obviously got to give her the confidence for shooting. On the other end, it's good. Dagne Slomak, two three-pointers in a row, and the offense of Central Connecticut is moving nicely here in this third quarter. Both teams are shooting well so far in this second half. Higher on the other end, no good, but rebound. Offensive rebound for Minnesota as they're looking to reset here a little bit. Getting another chance to get in the foul in the basket here. Hart with the screen. Ron stifled by the defense. Higher back to the basket. Shot, no good. Great defense by Megan Kenefick. And Central Connecticut. Offense is moving well. We'll see if they can add to what they've been doing so far here in the third quarter. Sellers with the screen. Opted not to take it. Sellers down low. Up top to Kenefick. And not quite. Sophie Hart with the rebound. Kenefick obviously is going to be one of their offensive players that they're looking to with Bell Lamphere out and with the transfer of their top scorer. Mara Braun with the three-pointer. Minnesota, the three-pointers have just been chugging along. But Samora Watson for Central Connecticut, their top scorer transferred to Texas A&M Corpus Christi. With your top two scores out last season, you got to turn to other players. Yeah, and that gives the opportunity to Amaya Williams and Kenefick to step up a little bit tonight with Bell Lanfer out. Or if your name is Lucia Noin, that's also a chance for you to show out a little bit. Getting a couple three pointers to go. And here she is with the ball back again, screened by Kenefick. Doesn't take the shot. Shot clock winding down. Back to the basket here. Noin with the shot, no good. And Minnesota with the rebound. Wonderful defensive fundamentals there by the Gophers, especially Grace Kohalski getting her hands up, using her body. Yeah, long run of play here. You see the subs on the bench, foul called, and that will take us to our five minute break. Minnesota up 22 against Central Connecticut. And there are some subs that will be coming in to this third quarter when we come back. Minnesota and their three-pointers have just been draining, but so has Central Connecticut as we have a three-point shooting third and a lot of three-pointers here in this third quarter. Shots have been falling for not only Minnesota, but Central Connecticut, who really had issues on the offensive end in the first half. The Blue Devils are three of five for 60% here in the second half so far. The Gophers are five of eight for 62 and a half percent. So combined, these teams are shooting eight for 13 so far in the second half, which is just unheard of. Yeah, 60% shooting across both teams has led to a very quick scoring drives here from both sides in the third quarter. If you're Central Connecticut, you're starting to build an offense here. What are you telling your team to really keep that momentum going? Continue to shoot the basketball, continue to use that high screen and roll that's been successful for them, and then continue it to generate some intensity and energy on the defensive end. Yeah, something to mention with this team last year, they averaged 25% 
from the three point line throughout the season. So to see 60% in one quarter, that is definitely a good sign that you want to see if you are a Central Connecticut fan here tonight. Minnesota with the ball up top, looking to get maybe another three pointer of their own here. Battle with the shot, no good. Rebound, Kennedy, excuse me, Stewart, and Minnesota gets the foul. That's on Kennethick. Just too much contact, and Minnesota gets the ball back in their own end with Mara Braun inbound. Stewart showing her versatility as a player. We've seen her hit those threes, but there she was attacking the offensive rebounds, forcing the Blue Devils to defend her. Stewart gets the friendly roll and adding to her point tally as she has already hit double digits. Minnesota 56, Central Connecticut 32. That turnaround jumper in the paint, so hard to defend for the Blue Devils. Especially with Stewart is six foot three, so getting a hand up in that shot can be incredibly difficult. Yeah, Stewart played 111 games at Nebraska, so she has that Big Ten experience. And her Big Ten experience is showing here tonight against the Central Connecticut State team. Impressive first outing for Annika Stewart as a gopher tonight, that's for sure. Absolutely. On the other end, Alana Sellers getting the shot to go. Nice little mid-range, just gets it to fall. And she's got eight points tonight, four from nine shooting. Travel on the other end. That's not what you, what you want to see if you're Minnesota. Yes, you got the lead, but obviously you want to control that ball. Not something you see Amaya Battle do often is an unforced turnover. I'm guessing Coach Plitzwhite doesn't want to see that happen again. Not too much. Obviously, you can give a little wee leeway. You know, one time is okay. And especially with the lead that Minnesota has here right now, not the biggest deal, but obviously ball control and having that possession is always a nice thing to have. Central Connecticut up top with the ball. You've seen that high pick and roll offense. They keep it on their own half. Behind the back, doesn't work. And Mara Braun with the steal. Looking, conveying the defense, seeing what she has to offer. Ops go back out to the three-pointer. On the other side, McKinney inside to Stewart. It's good. Stewart with the little bit of a spin that move. Little turnaround jumper over her right shoulder. Exact replica of the play previous where she scored as well. Stewart, 14 points tonight. She has really shown out for this Minnesota crowd. Minnesota native coming back to Williams Arena in Minneapolis here. I think Gopher fans are probably thrilled to see her back in a Gopher jersey after all these years, being a YZ native. Played for Nebraska for four years and then back tonight. You heard the crowd there. Good defense by McKinney, but she gets the foul call. Look at the replay here. Keeping herself in front of the defender. Ah, some people would say that wasn't a foul, but refs on the floor here call it as that sends Central Connecticut and number three, Selena Monestein to the free throw line. Their first free throws of the basketball game, believe it or not. <laughs> wow. And if you're Central Connecticut, what's the game plan going into these last few minutes in the third and this last chunk here of the fourth quarter? I think continue to do what's working, which is that high ball screen and roll between Williams and Sellers. It gives them the option to shoot the three or go inside. And then ramp up that defensive pressure for the Gophers, hope to force them into some turnovers, which Monist is difficult to do. The Gophers only have six turnovers so far in tonight's basketball game. Stewart gets the shot to go time and time again. 16 points, six from nine shooting. She's shooting 66% tonight. And man, Minnesota is just feeding her the ball tonight. I talked about it in the first half, but the Blue Devils don't have a matchup for Annika Stewart. She's six foot three. She can play inside and outside, and she's posing some problems for them tonight. Great defensive pressure by Rose. Oh, but a little clumsy on the pass. And Central Connecticut gets a chance to get another shot off here. Doesn't save the ball. A little sloppy there play from both sides. And it goes Minnesota's way. For those who heard a little bit of a cheer here recently, Blanket Lady has made her way down the court not too long ago, celebrating her 80th birthday here at Williams Arena. Always able to get the crowd going with a nice little blanket <laughs> wave. We also saw senior Maggie Sinano from Watertown, Minnesota make her first appearance for the Gophers tonight. This Minnesota team has a lot of natives. They have their transfers, like Rose here, just unable to get the shot to go. 
Back up top, Graholski, long three-pointer. It's good, Minnesota pushing this lead up to 28 as we hit the end of this third quarter. Grace Graholski, top scoring freshman in all of Big Ten last year. She's looking to be the top, ten, top scoring sophomore going into this season. Such a pretty shot she has. She makes it look so easy. She's got a really quick follow through, which can be difficult to defend. I, yeah. think, I think the difference in this year's Gopher squad, obviously they returned all five of their starters from last year's team, but they have added a ton of depth and versatility on their bench this year with transfers and incoming freshmen. Yeah, looking at that replay there, you saw Graholski just had a little too much hands in the chip there, and they're gonna get the foul call. On the other end, Central Connecticut, Dagne Slomak. I feel like I've had to say her name a couple times here. She has been hitting those three-pointers. Three for six in the game, so 50% from behind the three-point line. They're running her off a baseline screen. And Stewart gets it to go. Stewart up to 18 points. And that is the end of the quarter. Minnesota first half, but then Slomak comes in, hits three in the third quarter, and really gives Connecticut some extra scoring. The score doesn't necessarily show it, but I do feel like the Blue Devils found their rhythm a little bit offensively in the third quarter, thanks to Slomax three three-pointers. McKinney, open three-pointer, just couldn't get it to fall. Good grit and grind to keep the ball on the floor. Yes, they don't get the possession arrow. Oh, but they called the timeout. Great job by Minnesota, acting quickly. Look at Plitzowitz on the replay, able to call that timeout, and Minnesota keeps the ball here. Great job, great grit, great grind by this Minnesota team. I know that that's something that the coaching staff is looking oh. for this year, which is defensive energy and intensity. A big and a lot of fans, including little ones, with the Blanket Lady t-shirts on, celebrating her birthday here at Williams Arena. The fans always gotta give their love to Blanket Lady. Always great to see them getting started young as Gopher fans. Graholski with the three, just a little short, and Central Connecticut on the other end. Monestein up top, looking to get the screen going. Inside to the post. Great uh, hands by Alexia Rose defensively to dig in, force that turnover by the Blue Devils. Excuse me, that was a Maya Williams inside to Monestein, but Alexia Rose able to get the hands and Minnesota gets the ball after the foul. Alexia Rose, again, transfer student to Minnesota, came from UMass, played three years at East Carolina, scored a thousand points in three seasons in high school. She has the scoring ability, but also the ability to get some assists on the board. Inside, Woodson gets it to go, Minnesota strong offensive play able to see the gap in the defense and just drives into the lane woodson saw that opening on the left hand side and she took advantage of it with a nice strong finish left-handed layup under the basket williams in the mid-range blocked by stewart stewart gets, is just doing a little bit of everything tonight isn't she gets her own rebound but yes stewart was there ready to block that shot Loses the ball and shot clock violation for Central Connecticut State. Not what you want to see out of that offense, but great, great defense by Stewart. Able to get the pressure, get the block, and eventually force the shot clock violation. Rose brings the ball up to the midcourt here. Minnesota up 29, looking to extend their lead. Screened by Stewart out to Graholski. Foul called in the post. That's against Alana Sellers. Just having a hard time guarding Stewart tonight. Minnesota's running now a double high screen, giving Alexia Rose the option to go either left or right off of it. And then they're running Stewart and Graholski as their three-point shooters. That is a tough offensive set to defend for the Blue Devils. In quick. McKinney gets the roll. And Minnesota has extended their lead to beyond 30 here as they have really been able to get going in this fourth quarter. Fabulous awareness by both McKinney and Grahalski to recognize the defensive mismatch for that quick, easy bucket off the baseline inbounds play. Almost a miscommunication there between Central Connecticut State players, but they're able to maintain possession there. Out to Slomak. Slomak up top to Farrell. In the corner to Kennefinick. 
And in the middle, good move, gets it to go. Alana Sellers been able to, been trying to keep up with Stewart on the defensive end, but gets one going on the offense. It's a nice, strong post move by Alana Sellers. I've been impressed by her. She's got 10 points, five for 10 from the field, eight rebounds tonight. I think she's had a really solid first game for Connecticut State. Woodson inside, just blows past the defense, gets it to go, and Woodson, first game as a gopher, off to a strong start, eight points already, four rebounds, all offensive. I had the opportunity to watch Taylor Woodson play a lot in her high school career, and she is a very talented offensive player. I think what she finds her rhythm and flow within this Gopher offense, Gopher fans will be impressed with her abilities. Yeah, it got to be said, you've done a lot of Big Ten, or excuse me, state championship games here, so you have seen a lot of these players play. Into Woodson, double digit points for her. Woodson gets her points, and she has been showing out for this Williams Arena crowd tonight. Gophers have picked up their defensive intensity a little bit with this lineup, and you can see it creating some turnovers. McKinney and stepped in looking for the charge. Yeah, you look at that replay and you're just wondering where her feet set. The ref doesn't think so, and it's a foul against McKinney. That play developed because Stewart was trying to go for the steal, misses out on it, and it gave Sellers the opportunity to drive into an open post. You know, you see McKinney slide, doesn't get the body, doesn't get her position where she wants it to be. And that le leads to a Minnesota foul. Holloway in, Sinano in, and McKenna Johnson in. As a steal by Rose quickly turns defense into offense, into Holloway on the inside. It's good, Minnesota. Quick turnaround. This leads now 35 points. And I think it is all thanks to their amazing defense that they've had against this Central Connecticut team. You saw a strong transition offense there. And like you said, that all started with their defensive pressure and intensity, creating that turnover, and then a quick basket and offensive transition. Something that's got to be said, just because this isn't a Big Ten opponent does not mean Minnesota is going to step off the gas. They're going to show any opponent that they have the grit and grind that they are willing to put out for every single game letting their opponents know, hey, we have the pressure, we have the defense, and we're going to show it to you tonight. I think what you're also seeing in tonight's game with this 35-point lead is Minnesota's depth. And that's something they didn't have last year, but they have a ton of depth on their team this year. They can easily go 8, 9, 10 deep at any given time, which I think will benefit them come that treacherous and physical Big Ten conference play. Holloway with the drive, forces Central Connecticut to call the timeout. And look at that, just able to turn defense into offense. We were just talking about it. And we will be right back here on Big Ten Plus. Minutes 45, Central Connecticut, no points in the last two minutes. Here you see Woodson and Nehemiah Holloway get the last two layups that eventually led to the Central Connecticut timeout. Something to consider, too, given that this is the first game of the season, you might be seeing a little bit of fatigue setting in for the Blue Devils. They've had to play a lot of their starters a lot of minutes tonight, and I think that's something that we need to factor here late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, going into this game, the Central Connecticut Blue Devils had two scratches unable to play today, including Bell Lanfair, who had a broken wrist earlier in training top score one of their top scores last season and would be nice to have her on the floor right now as Johnson drives into the floor and that's a foul on Central Connecticut here's the replay here and you can just see able to get the step against the defender and just a little too hard from knowing and Johnson's onto the free throw line here Wisconsin native she is a freshman but she was 60th out of the ESPN 100 for top recruits. Minnesota's happy to have her. She did enroll early after graduating early from high school. Didn't play last season, but has had the opportunity to be with the team for a bit. Coach Plitzowite getting two great recruits out of Wisconsin with Grace Grahalski and then McKenna Johnson. There's 11 Minnesota players on the oh. University of Minnesota roster this year, which has to be one of the highest numbers in recent seasons. Yeah, 11 Minnesotans, two Wisconsinites, two people, one person from Connecticut and one person from California. Funny thing about it, Jordan Brooks, she's from Apple Valley, California. 
not Minnesota, for those who might have seen it on the Minnesota website. That's always fun when you have a city and name the same in two different places. Central Connecticut up top here. Looking to get their offense going a little bit. Haven't scored a point in almost three minutes now. Up top for the three-pointer. Air balls it. Rebound. And there we go. Kaya, uh, excuse me. Kaya Weiskamp is able to get the shot to fall. And that ends their drought of almost three minutes with no points. The Devils still keeping the intensity on defense. Taylor Woodson again with that beautiful left-handed drive just falling short. Yeah, Holloway, Woodson can't get the shots to fall. Jump ball on the floor, and it's Central Connecticut gets the arrow. So unfortunate. You can see the replay here. Sonano gets on the ball, but two Central Connecticut defenders get their hands in there, force the possession arrow to go their way with the jump ball. Give Central Connecticut credit. Even though they're down late in this game with three and a half minutes left, they are still hustling. They are still putting forth 100% effort here with every single possession. Lucy Noyne doesn't get the shot to fall. A little short there off the front rim. Minnesota quickly off the other end. Into Rose up top. Gets the little bit of a bounce and then flicks it over to Sonano. And Minnesota gets the key possession here as they're trying to build this offensive play. Rose inside, takes the pressure and stripped by Central Connecticut, and they get the turnover and are quickly on the other end here. Noin sets the screen, Weiskopf, and turn the ball over, and look who goes on the ground. McKenna Johnson says, I'm gonna reach for that ball and I'm gonna take it. Nice team effort there defensively for the Gophers. Johnson, it's good, long two-pointer, gets it to fall, and McKenna Johnson gets her first field goal to go. She had some free throws earlier in the game, but that is her first field goal to go, and timeout on the floor here for Central Connecticut. Only a 30-second, but again, as this lead gets to almost 40 points, and the offense really just hasn't been able to go in here in this fourth quarter, they call the timeout, they're looking for a reset. If you're if you're the Central Connecticut State head coach here, if you're Way Vini, what do you tell your players as we're heading into this last little chunk? I think continue doing what you've been doing. They're still giving great effort. They're playing hard. They're hustling after loose balls. At this point, I think the deficit is just too large for them to overcome, but I think they have to feel good about being on the road without their leading score and the efforts that they have given tonight at Williams Arena. Yeah, again, you're playing for pride at this point. And I think Central Connecticut, though the score may be large, and yes, Minnesota has recently gone on a 12 to two run in these last few minutes. I think there's a lot to be happy about with this Central Connecticut team. They've had the pressure. Their three pointers, which they had issues in with the first half, were able to get them go in the second half. I think both teams and both coaches are still feeling out their their strategies and their players and what matchups work, what lineups work. Um, so yeah, I think you're gonna see a lot of growth from both teams this season, especially the Blue Devils who were nine and 21 last season. Yeah, just a little talk on their three pointers quick. In the first half, they were one for seven. In the second half, they are four for eight. And that is a 50% three point shooting in the second half. I think that is something to be proud about with this team. And I think that is something that you can definitely carry not only here in Minneapolis, but beyond as you go into non-conference play and conference play after that. And if you've never played at Williams Arena, the, the baskets can be challenging. The depth perception can be hard to focus on. So maybe we're seeing a little bit of that with the Blue Devils as well from their outside shooting. Absolutely. Up top here, Weiskopf didn't play much in the first half. Gets the three-pointer to go. Hits the step back, creates the space against Johnson and gets that three-pointer to fall. Five points, two of two from the field, one for one from three-point and a rebound for Kyle Weisskopf late in this game. Johnson takes the contact, doesn't get the shot to go, but gets the foul here and she'll be going to the free throw line. Yeah, you can just see on the replay, a little too much contact and Johnson gets to shoot for two. Again, kind of as we mentioned in the past, practice with the team, 
last year after she graduated early but didn't play. Uh, first collegiate team, top 100 recruit. She's getting her first chances to play here at Williams Arena. Another player that was not on the roster last year that we're going to see get some playing time this year for, again, this Minnesota Gophers team that is much deeper this year than they were last season. Something I got to mention here, Bryn Senden from Wyzetta, Minnesota has come on for, I believe, her first minutes of the game. As this game winds down, Senden gets the chance to show what she's got here in Williams Arena. Great offensive rebound by Central Connecticut, but they lose the ball, and Nehemiah Holloway's on the other end. Defense on her back, out to Johnson. Johnson looking to make a move. Perhaps looking for a screen. Nope, goes out to Holloway, and foul called. Called on number 24, Weiskopf. We've called her name a lot in these last few minutes. Good patience offensively by the Gophers. Taking their time, waiting for the best shot here with a minute and 36 seconds left to go in the game. Up 83 to 45. Yeah, we've hit the bonus. So that means Minnesota gets to go to the free throw line and shoot for two. Nehemiah Holloway, a couple seasons ago, came off a rough ACL injury that made her miss the entire 2022-2023 season. But however, this last season, she led Big Ten freshmen in games with three or more steals with eight. So she has been a real engine off the bench, giving that defensive drive that Minnesota needed throughout the end of this last season. Here's Central Connecticut. Maya Williams over to Lucia Noin. Gets the shot off. Not quite, and almost a little bit of a miscommunication between two players, but no worries. Minnesota's got the ball up 40 with a minute 15 left. You always love to see two players still hustling after a loose ball with a minute left to go in a game. It's always a good sign from a coach's standpoint. Sonano, long three-pointer. Not quite. Sonano hasn't had too much time on the floor tonight. Sees the open shot. She takes it. Doesn't get it a fall, though. Central Connecticut on the other end with 54 seconds left. For a little bit of a talk for everyone here as Central Connecticut hits the three-pointer. Amaya Williams looking forward for Central Connecticut. They'll be facing Manhattan. Their next game after that, they'll be at Massachusetts. And their third game after that, they'll be facing off against Bryant. So obviously not any Big Ten opponents coming up, but these next few games, what are you looking for out of this Central Connecticut team? I think just to build on what they've done tonight, especially from a three-point shooting standpoint and from their defensive intensity and pressure, I think those are two things that stand out to me that the Blue Devils can be proud of coming out of Williams Arena tonight. Absolutely. Bryn Senden got to the free throw line, foul called, and we're in the bonus, so she gets two. Bryn is a Minnesotan through and through. Both her parents are U of M alums, and here she is, a now sophomore for this Minnesota team. Looking ahead for the Minnesota Golden Gophers, they face off against Vermont here in a couple days before they go against Mass Lowell, Massachusetts Lowell, here at Williams. And then, as Sinano gets the shot, and it's good. Good pass by Holloway. 41 point lead as we hit the end here. And before they go off to the Brian January Classic versus Oregon State here for Minnesota, those are our next three games. Two non Power Five teams, and then you get Oregon State. What are you looking for out of Minnesota? You know, I think they had a great first game tonight. The starting five definitely showed that they've got experience and they're used to playing together and continue to get efforts, intensity, and drive from your bench. And that is it. Minnesota gets the first win of the season.
अरे बाबा 